What's up, guys? Bloodshed here. Welcome to the Blood Heart Podcast, episode number 12. I can't believe it's already been 12 episodes. I do say that a lot, I guess, but three months, man. Three months, we're locked in. We're a podcaster for an entire season. What we do here is talk about all things Diablo 3. We do branch out to other topics, but lately I've been sticking around more of the Diablo with the new season starting, and I guess there's a lot of questions to cover. I get a lot of... Uh, inquiries about certain things. So I usually talk about them on the podcast. Today we're going to talk about specifically how my season's going between my two characters. We're going to talk about burnout in Diablo 3 and I'll cover out some more popular questions. Like always I get a lot of things on stream so I like to tackle them here. First of all my season's been going great. I think we're about what 13-14 days into the season and I started a demon hunter hardcore. We're playing only solo right? Uh, bounties are solo, everything solo, dolo, just me. We've been playing about five hours a day. I've been splitting my stream up with the release of WoW Classic. I've been doing five hours of Diablo and then five hours of World of Warcraft. So that's like 60 hours a week since we do Monday through Saturday. And surprisingly, not really tired, man. I've been still energetic and feeling good. I think because I have two games I'm passionate about. So WoW and Diablo, right? So it's been super fun. Like the stream goes by super fast and, uh, yeah, man, it's been just been really smooth and a lot of fun this season so far. I really like the season in general. We talked about the seasonal theme in the past. The seasonal theme is is fine. It's good. I really like the item changes, though. What the like Captain Crimson set does is it brings up a lot of the mid tier sets. So you have like the Captain Crimson. You could even play like a Tempest Rush speed build, Yuliana's. Uh, even like Zuni, like a lot of the builds that aren't S tier, like the best builds in the game, a lot of the those builds it helps. And that's why Captain is really good and Aw Guild is really good because it helps the people who need help. Or things like Echoing Fury are really cool and things like Squirts is really cool. They do help builds that are already at the top of the list. So that doesn't help so much. But, you know, shout out to Captain and Aw Guild helping out the, the little guys, right? So I'm about 50, 60 hours in on my solo self-found Demon Hunter. We did a GR 108, and um, I'm pretty happy with that. We've been playing like five hours a day. We did go crazy the first weekend, right? So that's where the numbers are inflated. But um, it's good. I jump in and I'm like, you know, work on being efficient, get my keys, do one set of bounties if I can, and I'll try to get as much progress as I can within a five-hour window. And I think I've been understanding what the gearing process is like more by playing not, I mean, five hours a day is still a lot, right? That's still like a long time, but I usually play like nine hours a day. So I guess I go through the season a lot faster than most, or I'm usually pushing like the 2K Paragon way quicker than most people. So I've actually enjoyed the slower pacing and every day I play, I have something to look forward to because I'm not just plowing through the season and so to speak right like i'm not i don't just have everything still like i still need a lot of things on my character i actually have my character up here so like i still need like a helm um like better boots a quiver i don't even have an ancient quiver and things like that and we did a solo 108 so that was good that was good we had some moments with death and we did have a few scares um me almost dying to blighter was probably one of the best moments ever in diablo there was something about the ominous i thought he was going to teleport to me if you guys watched it live on stream, there was like a weird thing where he could have easily ported to me, punched me and killed me. I was procced already fighting Blighter and all it would have took was him to teleport. So I try to stay within the non teleport range while dodging the poison. And that was like for the 105 or something. So now run 108. We just missed the 109 by like seconds, like 20 seconds. So I have high hopes for my Demon Hunter. I guess my goals is to do a 120 solo with multi shot and maybe farm like 2000 paragon solo so i do play all season long so i have a long time with it to progress if my character was to rip because you know lightning strikes the telephone pole or something out of my control um i think maybe i would play rapid fire um again i did play it last season that was fun or maybe um shadow with captain crimson since everyone's using a guild maybe do something different but as of right now, the plan is to take a UE multi-shot to the top, baby, right? Take it to the top. And people ask me a lot with the Demon Hunter, since I'm playing it on stream, they ask me about the rankings for it. And honestly, all the Demon Hunter builds are pretty close in power. If you look at the rankings right now, you have like Rapid Fire and Shadow at the top. 
And then just a few levels behind it, you have multi-shot. So I think multi-shot's more fish dependent and it'll perform better with like 4,000 Paragon. Once people really min-max and have a lot of Paragon to pump into it, I wouldn't be surprised if multi-shot ends number one. I guess my prediction would be like around 135 with multi-shot. I know it sounds crazy. That's just what I think. I think it's possible, man. If somebody has the Paragon and the gem levels to push it to the limit, and then I think you could see Rapid Fire and Impale all in the 130s, which is a good thing. It's a good balance for DH in general. So my season is going great, basically. Um, another thing people ask me, because I have been playing solo, is, Yo, Blood, how do you, like, are you so efficient, man? How do you farm so much Paragon in such a little time? Or, like, how are you managing this and that? And honestly, it's just about efficiency. You know, you want to keep the runs if it's a regular rift, like a torment level rift. You want to keep it in about three to five minute range. So you want to be efficient. Uh, some of the torment maps are just really bad, like Shrouded Moors, for example. So the, I kind of give it a little leeway to three to five minutes because it does vary. Greater Rifts are structured a little bit better than Greater, than greater Rifts. So Greater Rifts are structured better than regular Rifts. So you probably want to be in the more three to four minute range, typically. If you can normally be around four minutes, unless, again, you get the craziest most horrendous mob type in the game but yeah like three to four for greater rifts and then three to five for regular key farming you should be good to go you want to do things like reduce your downtime when you're in town so you know like when the rift closes you have about like 30 seconds so when you get to town you want to like maybe have a game plan like okay like for me personally i go through and identify my items first to see everything then i go to the blacksmith and then we salvage everything. And then I kind of look through my gear and then salvage the gear. That way it's already identified, I can see it. And then if I have time, like sometimes you just get bad items and you just destroy them all. I'll maybe roll some blood shards if I have a few seconds left or I just get ready to jump in the next rift. Like you want to be quick. Um, that's one reason why I stay in act one because everything is pretty close and uh, I enjoy act one, the aesthetics as well. I like the aesthetics of Act 1 and Act 5 probably the most. I think the color palette and everything. And um, in Act 1, everything is generally closer to like to the waypoint, to the obelisk, Kadala. You can just kind of hit everything and get back in the swing of things. That's one of the m things I like most about Diablo is the fact that you are playing constantly. And you're always just kind of moving and grooving, killing and chilling. Like you're not really hanging up in town too much. And the off season is a good time to do your theory crafting to get your builds together. And then once the season goes live, you just kind of put that plan in action. So I love like the go, go, go mentality and the grind, grind, grind of uh, Diablo 3 for sure. Talking about efficiency a little bit, people do ask me about using a sage set with like, well, how come I'm not using a sage set for more death breath or hey blood, how come you're not using a cane set? Like these other tools that you can use. You can definitely keep a cane set in your inventory and swap to it for the Rift Guardian and then swap back. And you get 25% chance per keystone to get a bonus keystone. So it's definitely more efficient. It's just a little too sweaty for me, man. It's a little too try hard. Just for me specifically. If you do it, that's cool. I'm just, uh, I'm good, you know? And for DBs, I don't think it's worth. Um, you really only need DBs early game. And then after that, it's just nice to have. They do give you items. You do upgrade and... I just feel like overall, I want to go as fast as possible. And um, like people were saying like, yo, you do more damage. I'd say, well, I don't need to do more damage because we already one shot. So wouldn't that ring be used better for a speed, like a, like a movement speed ability or more cooldown, like with an Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac? Like it would be put to better use for something that we actually do need versus something that we don't need. So I will favor absolute speed, even dropping Nems for speed and efficiency ease of use than you know getting double sages getting even a nemesis bracers or anything else like that so i'm more like speeds right i know it's like the same thing but like if you're doing speeds right think about it you're getting more blood shards per hour than you would get you're getting tons of db still you're getting tons of keys still you're getting more legendaries per hour which is also technically more ancients per hour more primals per hour more gold per hour. The more you're doing stuff, the more keys you're farming, the more you're doing greater risk faster. It just all synergizes together and just being that much more efficient because you are competing, you know, with yourself or you're competing on the leaderboard against other people. So you want to out efficiency 
the leaderboard and you want to out efficiency your previous bests. You know, you kind of find a cut corners and trying to find faster ways to gear. But honestly, if these things make you happy, you should definitely do it because the number one killer of production is your motivation, right? So you definitely want to keep, if it makes you happy to use a Sage set, then you should do it or any of these other sets. If stacking gold fine and seeing the screen blow up and shiny money bin like, uh, you know, explosions, then you should definitely do that because that's going to be the number one most effective thing is to not quit and to keep grinding. So, yeah, like I said, I've only been doing five hours a day and it's like a jam packed five hours. It was like when I used to work. And um, when I used to work a non-streamer job and a non-YouTube job, I used to come home and uh, I had like five hours, right? Like, let's say you get off at five, you make dinner, you do whatever you got to do. And then I would play like seven to 12, right? And then like my night would be like Diablo, for instance, like that particular day. And I would just be as efficient and go as much as possible within that five hour window. And I think me only playing five hours a day this season really has got me in that groove again. And uh, my progression is slower because I'm only playing five. I'm playing about four hours less than I normally do a day. So, um, yeah, since my progression is slower, I've been enjoying it more. And I don't have all the gear I need already. And um, I'm excited. Like, it's been fun. It's like kind of solo, hardcore. So it's already more chill. I already know I'm not going to keep up by playing solo. So if you're not going to be top 10, you might as well just enjoy the ride. We're going to talk about enjoying the ride later with burnout specifically. But I also want to touch on like early game spendage. So people say like, yo, like what do I do early game and to be efficient since we're on the topic of efficiency overall, typically you want to spend your blood shards on things that cost 25 because it's way cheaper. Like if uh, amulets are a hundred, you can roll four pairs of gloves by the time you only get one amulet. So you can get things faster and all that. But you really want to focus on your biggest upgrades. So even if you don't really know what to do, just look at the build and hover over every item, you know, like in a, say, Diablo fans build guide and see what gives you the most damage. Like it'll say like uh, multi-shot damage increased, right? It'll say wave of light damage increased, like your multiplier. So you want to get those first. So weapons, use your hope of cane on weapons, use your, your uh, re-rolls. Like if you want to do a set of bounties to get better gear, don't re-roll your gear, only re-roll your weapons. It's more important. Or your rings, especially as a necromancer, you got that Crispin Sentence or the Skeletal Mage Ring or Witch Doctor, I guess if you like maybe the uh, Short Man's Finger. So things that are really your big multipliers on it, you want to use bounty materials on. Anything else, just use Hope of Cain, like use the upgrade system or use Blood Shards on or just hope you get it by just playing efficiently, grinding, you know? Keep it, um, yeah, like you can literally spend bounties. You can spend an hour doing bounties and get nothing. You can upgrade everything and not get one single upgrade. Had you have just done rifts, you would have got keys, like we talked about, DBs, gold, blood shards to try to get more gear. So it's just, you really only want to do bounties when you're trying to specialize in one area. And then I would go back to bounties late game if you really can't get, like, let's say you can't get, like, a Pinos Pride. Like, with the monks, Pinos Pride's kind of hard to get. So if you really can't get something that's a multiplier, then, yeah, you can do bounties on that. I think that's more worth when it's, uh, when it's like, late game when you really need to get something that you needed to, to finish off your build or something. I've also been playing a Witch Doctor. So if you guys have been watching the YouTube series, if you don't know also, again, it's hardcore, it's solo. So the same thing as my main account, but this account is hardcore solo Witch Doctor and it's a limited time let's play. So if you guys ever thought about playing alongside me or you ever wanted to play hardcore and uh, you can definitely play with somebody who has even limited more game time. So with this account, Particularly, we only play like five hours a week. It's like four and a half to five hours a week. And I post two episodes a week on YouTube. They're like two to two and a half hours long. And I've been having so much fun filming this. I'm still in yellow gear. I think we're like seven and a half hours in. We did like a GR 40 or something like 40 or 50. And we have Lakumbas and it's super exciting. And, um, you know, we have our gazing demise. Like I had to pivot and go into like a, um, a barber build, like a spirit barrage build. So we have like full yellow gear and we have spirit barrage weapons and nemesis bracers and squirts. So we have like this hodgepodge patched together build. And this is my favorite part of ARPGs is just putting things together and making them work, you know? 
I think um, like the leveling process, right? So I'm in that leveling gearing process right now. We're, we're like 44 Paragon and um, we did hit the leaderboard. We're at the like 999 rank. We did hit the leaderboard with that. So you guys can play alongside me on YouTube. Um, that character is coming along nicely, and um, I've been having a lot of fun with it. We're probably going to build into a Lawn, Dagger, a Dart build, and try to get on the leaderboard with the character by the end of the season. Again, only playing five hours a week. So my main account, Demon Hunter, we do five hours a day, six days a week. And then on the Witch Doctor, we do five hours a week. So that's like super slow time. If you want to play alongside my Demon Hunter, you can always watch the Twitch VODs. You go to twitch.tv slash bloodshed slash videos and you should see all the past broadcasts and you can just literally play alongside me for the whole season if you have more game time to play or you want if you just want more videos you know you want to see blood more if i stream in the morning and you get home at night or whatever you know like you can watch all that content the vods are stored up to three months i also updated all my builds on patreon.com slash bloodshed they're free for everybody i used like a website um, I updated like 40 Diablo fan builds for patch 2.6.6, so you can check them out there. I've been making sure everything is filled out perfectly. There was some issues with Diablo fans, but I think they squirted away for the most part now. So I'm pretty happy with my two characters, and the slower, more chill progress has me excited every day still. And we were talking about burnout earlier. I'm going to jump into a topic, okay, called burnout in Diablo 3. You know, the part where everybody falls off. And some people even fall out of the whole game completely. So one of my uh, stream friends, Marwan Gaming, recently officially quit Diablo. He's done, man. All right. I don't know if there's anybody that streamed Diablo more than me. I've streamed Diablo over 6,000 hours. I played over 10,000 hours. Marwan's played over 10,000 hours and he streamed just under six. And we both started around the same time. So we basically came up together in a way like we both streamed um around when it was dead back in season six seven eight it was like super dead and like you know we were grinding and grinding and grinding and i'm not saying the way i play is better or anything like that i just want to put that out there like and his reasonings why he decided to leave diablo um makes sense to me like i really didn't have any qualms with his goodbye video i don't know if you guys watched it or anything but he basically was saying that you know it's the same meta for two years and there's no been real no big mechanical changes and he's burned out dude like he's you know the people that want to be competitive like to me i could care less about like ranking it's all about my own personal enjoyment you know like it doesn't really matter like if a place is rated like two out of five stars but it's my favorite sandwich shop like i could care less you know if it's not if it's the most inefficient sandwich shop i don't care man i'm gonna go there that's a mom and pop stop that's what i like right so, but if you're like um, Leviathan or you're like, say, Marwan, and you really want to like push the envelope and no life it for 16 hours a day and be competitive in no life Kriparian, right? If you really want to do that stuff, you're going to be playing the same build all the time, right? You're going to be playing rats for two years. It came out in season 11. We discovered the rat run meta. We're in season 18 now. That is over two years. So... I can see it, man. Like, if that's all you did for, like, is play rats, you know? And, like, let's say there's a Veers meta, but it's not as effective as rat runs still. It would burn you out, man. Like, it's boring to do the same thing. You know how many, you know how many rat runs I've done on stream? Zero. During the beta, we were doing two men, a singularity necro and a support necro. And we were like, wow, this is like really good synergy. And then it kind of blossomed into like a rat run meta for like a four man, right? And then like barbs can spawn globes and this is great. Like, you know, this is efficient. But I, on the beta, we mess around with it, but I've never actually streamed it. That's why all my Paragon is usually like around 2,500 every season, two to 2,500. Cause I just kind of play whatever I want, man. I played a, we made up a, we played wizard meta last season which was the second fastest speed comp. And then before that, we played like um, slow, slow pushes with like star packed, but we didn't do any rat runs, right? Because it's crazy, you know, to actually sit there and do the same thing forever. Diablo is already monotonous in a good way for me, like where you're just doing riffs and griffs. And then sometimes you throw in, let's say, Hellfire amulets or you throw in bounties, right? So it's, it's, it's not like it's so many activities to do already. And then when you're also playing the same build every season and your only goal is efficiency, that shit's kind of depressing, man, you know? 
So I don't really fault anybody that is a pusher or even like Chainer. Chainer was an old Diablo streamer. And like to be competitive, he had to really like, you know, do the same thing and all this stuff. It's just like round and round we go. It's the same thing. But for me, I found um, not grinding Paragon and just gearing and, and reducing my progression by playing my way way more enjoyable. And I suggest everybody does it that way, too, because the people do ask me, they're like, yo, blood. How are you not burned out, man? I'm like, dude, I play like I played five builds last season. We did a 128 with Veers. And then I was like, okay, if I want to continue, I have to fish and fish and flip and flip and flip. And I don't want to do that. So you know what? I didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're basically like one of the top Diablo streams. And I don't ever do metas or I don't ever anything like that. The best we ever ended was rank 11 on the leaderboard in season nine. And I had like 1200 Paragon and I ended rank, I rank 11. So <laughs> you know what I mean, man? You don't have to just do what, you know, was the most effective. And if, if being effective makes you happy, then by all means, you know, boo boo, make yourself happy. You should do it for sure. But for me, so we did a 128 with Veers last season and then we pushed Witch Doctor to 124 and then I did a 120 with Necro and then I did a 118 with Bless Shield Crusader, and most of those builds I had never played before. Veers was new. Veers was actually a brand new build, like the way that you play it and with cold and everything. And then Lawn Witch Doctor was new. We never had like a Lawn season to push Witch Doctor, right? And then we I did a Lawn Corpse Lance Necro, which I never played. I actually played Trigool in Season 11, which is very similar, but it was different. And then we played Bless Shield Crusader, Lawn, which I played the Akon version, but never the Lawn version. You can see there's a correlation where it's a kind of a new experience for me. And I'm just playing for fun. And um, and then I think we had an all, I think we pushed our hardcore. Oh, Lawn Rapid Fire on hardcore. Never played Lawn Rapid Fire. The build didn't exist until last season. And here we go. We got season 18. I'm playing multi-shot. I have made multi-shot before back in season six on hardcore. And that was the last time I played it. So this season's like a little nostalgia for me. But, you know, we do have the Squirts necklace changing it up. We do have the Captain Crimson. And Multishot's never been this strong before. And I haven't played it since season 11, like as a push build. So it's very new and fresh. And um, I don't know if you guys know about Squirts necklace, but if you're not taking damage, you do 100% increased damage. And it's been so much fun trying to keep up Squirts. Like if you watch my stream, I'm trying to dodge every arrow. It's like a mini game within a mini game because you're kiting like League of Legends, ADC, man, LCS is on. We're doing this and you're like dodging everything and you're shooting, running and gunning. And I've been having so much fun with multi-shot. I want to main it the whole season. I want to try to get a 120 and all that stuff. I'm excited. And then um, we did play Lawn Witch Doctor, but this is for the Let's Play and I thought it would be better for the Let's Play. So I did repeat the witch doctor from last season but this time we get to use the echoing fury and the dream gem so it's a full dream gem pay playthrough and i don't have a witch doctor let's play on youtube so it's been fun for me you know i would say i'm not saying i'm playing the way that you should play but i guess you should play games for fun so i am playing the right way damn it yeah you should play for fun that's like one of the best things about diablo is you don't need a raid group like in WoW. You don't need like an Overwatch or League of Legends. You don't need somebody to play the right role so you can win. You can put all of the work on your shoulders and even hit the We hit the leaderboard with 44 Paragon. You can feel competitive. You know what I mean? Just pushing yourself as far as you can go and competing with yourself and not feeling like you have to keep up with anything you know, or anything like that. Just have fun, kick back. It's Diablo, man. You crack open some brews or whatever, man, and have fun. All right. I got a lot of community. All right, we'll, we're done with that. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that segment. Um, I just have one, que one question to answer that I've been getting like crazy, and that is yo, 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 blood, yo, blood. Hey, yo, blood. Where are stone gauntlets, man? Or did they take them out of the game? <laughs> Yo, man, stone gauntlets uh, drop on Crusader and Barb reliably. They do drop at level 31, so you can power level a Barb or a Crusader. They always roll strength, right? You can roll a Barber Seder to 31 and roll blood shards. Or you can just make a level 1 Barber Seder and upgrade gloves, and you can get them that way. But it does cost death breath. 
Um, yeah, so, but they start dropping at 31, and then you can just log into your 31 and then roll for gloves and get them that way, put them in the cube. Um, or if you get the 70 version, you can re roll them on your main character, obviously. Stone Gauntlets, yeah, they only drop on the strength based classes for whatever reason they always did and they didn't ever change it, but every class can actually use them. Another question, which I might have answered before in a previous podcast, is yo, 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 blood. Hey, yo, blood, when do I augment, man? And what level should they be? Augmenting completely depends on you and your playtime and uh, what you have going on. If I'm playing solo and I'm playing hardcore, so I'm probably going to augment 90s and replace them with 110s. You want to, I recommend 20 levels apart for your augments. Otherwise, it does not feel good. It feels really poopy, man. It feels like not a big deal. Like, oh, 90 to 99 or 90 to 100. But when you go from 80 to 100, you can immediately feel the difference. So I'd recommend you go 20 levels apart, whatever you decide. If you're playing four mans, you probably go right to 120s or yeah, you probably go right to 120s or 110s at least. And you would bypass the whole early game because you have three other players helping boost you and keeping you alive and all that stuff. But um, it really depends on the build, you know. If you're playing Veers, Veers is so strong or Lawn Carnival. If you're playing like a powerhouse build, you can probably go right to 120 or 1 to 110. If you're playing like a mid-tier build or A-tier build like me, like Multishot or Necromancer, like you might be doing like, you know, 90s and replacing them with 110s. That's probably what you're going to be doing. Just keep them a level apart, uh, 20 levels apart is my recommendation and um, have fun with it, you know? Like it's all part of the game. Like it's our end game is leveling augments and you can put some crappy ones on now and then you don't have to worry if the item is perfect. And then by the time you put your big ones on a month into the season or whatever, or two or three weeks into the season, then you can really focus on if it's really good or not. So it kind of helps because a lot of times you don't want to augment bad things. But if you're throwing crappy augments on in the beginning, it doesn't matter as much. you know. Well, that's going to be all for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's podcast. If you did enjoy it, feel free to leave a like on YouTube or a rating on Apple Music or Spotify or whatever you're watching this on. Wherever you are in the world, man, if you want to support, you can also sub on Twitch. You can sub on Patreon. I like to like I like my YouTube audience to go to Patreon. I mean, I like Twitch subs, right? But if you go to Patreon, then I guess I know it's from YouTube. It's hard to tell where everything is. But a lot of uh, my fans, I guess, or the community consumes all the content. Like a lot of you guys watch me on Twitch, YouTube and the podcast. So it's hard to know exactly where you can follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram. I'm going to be better about posting pictures in the future. It's just, I guess I didn't, I got to get used to it. I don't really, I'm not really like, oh, let's take a selfie, but maybe I need to get over it so the community gets more blood pics. I hope this podcast wasn't too ranty, but I'm passionate, man. I'm passionate about Diablo. I mean, I started to be a Diablo podcast over seven years into the game. And um, I never, I plan on going anywhere. I plan on streaming this game every day until D4. And even then, I might come back to Diablo 3 every seasonal weekend. Even if D4 comes out, I will probably be back for at least a seasonal weekend launch for Diablo 3. So much fun. My favorite game of all time. And uh, I hope you guys join me, man, in the future and now and all that stuff. I'm rambling. This is the Bobo Bo Bo Bloodshed, and I'm out of here. Peace.